Hi guys, welcome to my channel A Happier Me where we talk about homemaking and healthy lifestyle. I have been living in the US for almost two decades now and there are various good aspects of American culture that I have adopted over these years which has helped me grow as a person. But today we are delving into the science behind some awesome customs in the Hindu culture that come from India. From the delicious uh, veggie thalis to the practice of namaste, there is a science behind them. So let's explore those in this video. So let's start with the veggie thali. Do you know why it is so popular in India? It not only tastes amazing, it's actually packed with all the nutrients your body needs. With a mix of veggies, lentils, grains and dairy, a veggie thali provides a balanced combination of carbs, proteins, healthy fats, vitamins and minerals. Plus, many of the dishes contain probiotics and fiber which promote good digestion and gut health. A lot of Indians would eat idli, dosas and other fermented food as well as yogurt dishes in their meals which are very healthy for your bowel movement and it uh, promotes healthy bacteria. So if you eat this balanced thali, it would prevent bloating and constipation problems. Indians also use different spices like black pepper, cardamom, clove, bay leaf, coriander, cumin and fennel seeds regularly in their cooking. So all of these spices have amazing health benefits. Uh, actually talking about spices, this one needs a separate mention. Turmeric has been widely used in Indian cuisine and Ayurvedic medicine for centuries and it is super healthy. Turmeric isn't just a spice, it's a powerhouse of health benefits. The active uh, compound in turmeric called curcumin has potent anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. It reduces the inflammation in the body, supports the immune system, and may even protect against chronic diseases like heart disease and cancer. Even the scientific research shows that regular consumption of turmeric can prevent Alzheimer and dementia. So there is a great scientific reason for using it in so many Indian dishes. Also, turmeric is good for your skin. So people in India use it in their face pack. Another thing I love about Indian culture is that people in India just drink plain water with their meals and they avoid the carbonated or sugary drinks with the meal especially. Um, water is the best uh, way to keep you hydrated. It's zero calories. And I also noticed one thing that a lot of people in India would not drink cold water with the meals. They will have water after maybe 30 minutes of having uh, the meal. It helps with the digestion. The next one is the greeting, which is Namaste. So it is not just exchanging a greeting. It actually promotes the mental well-being and I'll tell you why. When you join your palms together in this position, it activates pressure points in the hands which can help relieve some stress and anxiety. And uh, also, it is just a respectful way of saying hello. And I feel that there's another benefit of doing Namaste over shaking hands with someone because this way you don't transfer your germs to another person if you're sick. <clears throat> On similar lines, most people in India would take off their shoe when entering the house and change into some house slippers. Removing your shoes before entering a house isn't just about keeping the house clean, it also prevents the spread of germs. Studies show that shoes can track in a host of bacteria and toxins from the outside environment which can then be transferred to the indoor surfaces. So just by leaving your shoes at the door, you are helping to maintain a hygienic living space for everyone in your house. Another great thing about Indian culture is that moms get a lot of rest after having a baby. And I feel that it's so much required for their physical and mental recovery. The postpartum period is a crucial time for moms to heal from childbirth and adjust to the demands of motherhood. 
So this rest allows the body to repair tissues, regulate hormones and replenish the energy uh, stores and this will overall promote their mental well-being. I remember both my mother-in-law and my mom came to help me after my um, both my deliveries and they would make me extremely nutritious and tasty food and uh, this helped me recover fast and also helped me with breastfeeding. The next one is yoga and in particular the Surya Namaskar or Sun Salutation. It is a series of poses which is a complete mind and body workout. Each pose uh, stretches and strengthens different part of the muscle group. It improves your flexibility and it also boosts the circulation. Also the synchronized breathing of Surya Namaskar promotes more blood flow to the brain. It's like a mini cardio session and meditation all roll into one. I have a separate video on sun salutation so you can check it out in the cards here. I also made another 10 to 15 minutes yoga workout video that you can also check out and I will put the link in the description below. So make sure to watch that after you're done watching this video. I feel just by having a morning walk as long as you're doing it before 9 a.m and uh, 10 to 15 minutes of yoga four to five times a week is enough for both your physical and mental health okay the next thing that indians love or are good at is saving uh, from the beginning uh, they prioritize saving and investing for their financial future and many indians follow something called delayed gratification of achieving something in future versus getting everything now on debt People in India, as much as possible, like to live debt free. And it is totally normal there. I know the loans are now much more readily available um, and at relatively lower interest rate than what they used to be when I was growing up. But m more often than not, Indians are good at money management and they would avoid taking loans unless it's absolutely necessary. The other fun part about Indian culture is the festivities and weddings and they do it in full swing. They will have themed parties for each ceremony and the wedding in India typically lasts for four to five days. Those who can afford it will love showing off their wealth during the wedding. In fact, wedding of their kids is a biggest expense after the house and it is something the parents just save for nowadays people in india are getting married a uh, little bit later than what they used to be when i was growing up even the bride and the groom have enough time um, to earn and contribute to the wedding expenses but it is something that uh, it's like a dream thing for them they will have this vision and uh, the guest will definitely have a blast because of this amazing ambience, the food, the dance. Uh, so it's, it's just fun. So my next point is all about this, which is that Indians are inherently very nice to their guests and they have a concept called Aditi Devo Bhava, which means your guests are like gods. So they treat them very well. And actually it has another benefit when you show act of kindness or generosity it releases oxytocin and serotonin in your brain these are feel-good hormones and it reduces your stress and uh, anxiety level so that's one of the reason why depression and anxiety are less common there compared to uh, what people in the West face okay this one I wanted to mention because many people across the globe uh, don't know about this that India is one of those countries that has never invaded any other country and it likes to live in peace contrary to what many people might think because of this constant battle between India and Pakistan over Kashmir Indian culture always has highlighted values of non-violence, tolerance and diplomacy. India's commitment to peace isn't just a moral stance, it's a strategic choice. By prioritizing diplomacy and non-violence, India maintains stability within its borders and also like to foster positive relations with other countries. This peaceful approach reduces the risk of conflicts and promotes cooperation for mutual trade benefit. The next one that I want to talk about is 
people in India generally value education a lot, especially in the middle class. And uh, families often make significant sacrifices to ensure that their children receive the best possible education. This dedication to learning has fueled India's rise as a global hub for innovation. In fact, many leading scientists, engineers, IT professionals, and doctors in the US are of Indian origin. The emphasis on education in Indian culture isn't just about academic achievement. It's also about empowering their citizens and driving the societal progress. Education opens door to opportunities it improves your economic prospects and enhances cognitive abilities. By investing in education, Indian families are laying the foundation for a brighter future for themselves and for the future generations. So these are all the good parts of Indian culture that I wanted to share with you today. And I also wanted to show the science behind them. I hope you learned something from this video. And if you found anything surprising, please write in the comments below. Uh, I would love to hear your comments and I will see you in my next one. Until then, take care. Namaste.